So, hello, everybody. Uh, today we have um, Robert Carwitz always helping us, and uh, Marika Jebra. Yeah, she's uh, an ICO member and she's a member of the, the faculty of the ICO. She graduated in the Scandinavian Osteopath School in Gothenburg in 1998. That's correct. Yeah. Marika, yeah. And now she lives in Sweden where she uh, runs her own clinic, her own practice. And I met Marika while I, she, she was studying at the John Wenon College uh, of Classical Osteopathy back in 2005, 2006, with a, a big group of uh, Swedish uh, students. Um, and I, I believe you have got many roles over the years in, 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 in osteopathy, in the association, in the Sweden, Swedish Association of Osteopathy. And also you, you were president of the European Federation of Osteopaths for a few years, which is, uh, I find it really interesting. Um, and just to be aware, she's a black belt in jiu-jitsu. So we are going to be nice to Marika. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, okay, so yes, uh, Robert, all for you. Hello everyone, thank you very much for either listening to this podcast or watching this on YouTube again and uh, we're really, really, really happy to have uh, Marika on today because she's had a, a fascinating career, a very diverse and uh, she's a really interesting and fantastic osteopath. So, so Marika, um, you graduated in 1998 in Gothenburg, what, what, what first interested you in uh, osteopathy? Well, actually, I, I used to live in England. I lived in England for 17 years and I practiced uh, martial arts, jiu-jitsu. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, every time people got injured, they went to an osteopath and I thought, what is this? You know, this is interesting. So uh, I, I sort of decided, I tried, uh, well, actually, I joined the uh, ESO in 1991. Uh, and uh, I had to do the summer course because obviously not being uh, of English, I didn't have an A level, so I had equivalent in Sweden, but you know, I had to prove this. Uh, and I got accepted by the ESO. But the problem was that was before osteopathy was legislated in the UK. Uh, and I've been living too many years in, in England to get any money from Sweden. Um, so I couldn't do it then. Uh, and then, uh, I, you know, I was sort of thinking, I was really trying. And then in 1994, I moved back to Sweden and I started again. So I did four years at the uh, Scandinavian School of Osteopathy in Gothenburg, which is now a very good school, still was then. But uh, uh, yeah, with um, CE C certified. <laughs> how, how did you first come across classical osteopathy? Uh, well, uh, actually, because uh, my, my teacher or my, my uh, the guy who was the uh, the principal and also the chairman of the Swedish Osteopathic Association, Sten Bolin, uh, he's been over to Jon Werner mm. a long time ago. So the first day I studied osteopathy in Sweden, we were learning maybe mm. quite, quite a crude body mm. adjustment, but it was mm -hmm. a body adjustment. That was the first thing we did when we started. Uh, so I, I like that kind of concept of treatment. Uh, and then in, I think, uh, because I started working for the, for the board, you know, I joined the, uh, I, I didn't qualify in 98, but in 97, I joined the Swedish board and I was sort of, uh, I became the, the person who was um, in charge of international relationships because I speak English quite well and yeah. people, well, nobody wants to speak English. So um, I started to sort of be the one who sort of arranged the courses. So I invited the, uh, Mr. Vernon, mm. he came over with Gail in a pool somewhere. That was, yes, maybe 90, 98, maybe 99, 99 maybe, uh, mm. to Sweden. They drove all the way from England. Mm. Wow, <laughs> that's a long drive. <laughs> yeah, actually that was, that was so, so funny because he had this big fur hat. Mm -hmm. And it was like to the south of Sweden, to Gothenburg. Mm -hmm. And they had to go on, a, on his ferry and it's a ferry across and they were allowed to take the car because he was like so old so mm. they took the car over and had this big fur hat mm. and um, he was he was really good and nobody wanted to speak english in the evening so i always get and it was uh, henry was me was with us as well henry lee yes mm. oh, right. so, so me and mr vernon was, and henry were sitting talking and i was like talking to mr vernon 
And then suddenly he's gone, I just want to sleep. <laughs> and he says, well, that happened before. Okay. And then he says, he wakes up again and he's going to me, he says to me, oh, how is osteopathy in Sweden? And I said, well, you know, it's pretty good. We can do what we like, but, uh, you know, we don't, we're not legislated, but, you know, so it's difficult for pay, to get patients and stuff like that, but we don't have a problem with what we do. Yeah. So he says to me, are you allowed to treat children? Hmm. And I said, well, no, not, un not under, under the age of eight, hmm. uh, because then we're probably very dangerous then, you know, so un under the age of age, age of eight, we can't do it, okay. Hmm. So he says to me, lucky you, not <laughs> you <can> beg it. <laughs> I, I don't treat many children. I have a, uh, in my clinic, one of my colleagues, Alex Liss, is a really nice chap. He did a, um, a, a master's degree and he treats loads of babies. And I can hear them all crying and screaming in the next room. And I'm thinking, I'm glad I'm in here having some peace and quiet. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> with, exactly, yeah. With, with my 80 year olds. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. No, so, so that was the first time I met him. But I mean, I've, I've always thought that classical osteopathy was very interesting from the start because my my teacher or my you know Stemberlin was talking about it so that mm. sort of made me feel really interested that, so, that is interesting isn't it because from the very start of your or certainly this your second start as, yeah. as a as an undergraduate in osteopathy you you were learning a whole body routine rather yeah. than rather than um uh, at, the, at the undergraduate colleges now they they still do teach some whole body stuff but it is very focused on usually the painful area yeah and, and that that's wrong isn't it you know i mean i, I see that when i sorry i'm digressing a bit but no, I, that's fine okay so so because I work as a school assessor, I'm a constant. Uh, I work for Austrian Standard Institute, and I go to schools and to see that they are following the SEN standard and uh, to certify them. Hmm. And usually, I have to go and see lessons, and I have to see and I have to see all the curriculum. I'm going through yeah. everything, and they're saying that they're teaching body adjustment. Yeah. And when I see what they're doing, and I'm going, yeah. you know, yes. it's it's not true. No, no. It's it's usually some degree of articulating articulating yeah. everything, isn't it? Rather than body adjustment, in in, in my experience of, yeah. of, of and they being, think that that is body adjustment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the yeah. same in America. Mm. You, know, you know, I've been like I think six times to Kirksville, and I've been lecturing in there three times or four times. I don't know. And I have been up on the stage, and I've been doing body adjustment and i mean trying to explain and then you have cameras everywhere and they're looking and and then you have the people the doctors the doctors of osteopathy they're saying yeah. oh yeah yeah we do that sort of kind of articulation yeah and it's like yeah, good for you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's, yes. it's, it's interesting how people view it as they're doing the same thing as well when they're when they're not I, well, I that's fascinating. Yeah. That, that happened to, to Mr. Wenon when people attended to, you know, a treatment or just to watch for a day to Mr. Wenon. Yeah. They, they, they were upset because uh, he didn't do any tricks or any fireworks, as he yeah, used yeah, to yeah, say. Yeah, I know that. No click or no sequences or no fireworks. Mm. Exactly. And, and, and that's, that's the, the peaceful uh, moment of the body adjustment. I think that's, that's the key because uh, you are talking to the nervous system all the time. So it's, you know, what, what should we see shouting or something to the nervous system or being quiet? That's the key, no? Well, I always think it's really interesting because I have some people that go to a chiropractor, some in fight everywhere, you know, and I, had, I used to work in a clinic with a chiropractor and he was like, his ideal situation would be to have as many patients as possible in one day. Mm, wow. His goal <laughs> was this guy who had like 18 patients a day. Mm, eight, uh, yeah. 18, right? And I said to him, you're bloody nuts, why? Mm. And he said to me, well, you know, you should do a bit like SIT technique. You know, you should come in, you just do one stuff, one thing, and then get rid of them. Get rid of them, yeah. <laughs> and I said to him, if you think about it, if you have a stove and it's hot, right, and you don't know it, and if you touch it, you're hot, you're, 
you, you pull back, yeah. don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I think exactly. the body reacts in the same yeah. way. If you just throw yourself on top of someone, try yeah. to do a, a really vicious manipulation, the body yeah. will react against it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. the beauty. That's the beauty of osteopathy, isn't it? Mm. You need to coach yeah. the body. You need mm. to. And I think that still had the same ideas. I think that maybe some people get the wrong idea of stills. I think mm. uh, when I started training, he was like still was the dry bone man. And I think that he wasn't the dry bone man. I think he was quite different to that. I think that the osteopathy in, in America is taking off a different direction because they wanted to be doctors. Mm. But I think he was very quite of a, an understanding person of the physiology and everything that we didn't really understand. That's mm. why I think. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But it's interesting that you 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 began at the European school for two years, and then you you went just a, just a short period, and then a I short period. Get okay. Yeah. Okay, because I, I don't know, maybe you found some difference between uh, the, the osteopathy they they were doing in, at the European school. And, oh. Yes, absolutely, yeah. most definitely. I, I I think that I it was probably the meaning for me to go to Sweden and, and go to, to this school because I felt that I had so much advantage of understanding that this is the direction I want to go. Then I think yeah. you know, I have colleagues in Sweden who've gone up to do uh, um, obviously bio, biomechanics. But yeah, bio, bio, oh, yeah. bio yeah, yeah. The, uh, the cranial bio thing, whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. some are going yeah. to, uh, to Sutherland College yeah uh, you know yeah southern cranial foundation yeah yeah but I, I i feel very i think classical osteopathy for me is absolutely fantastic and yeah. that's the way i work yeah yeah just it's a part of me i think mm. you know and, and how did you find uh, studying the, the the diploma course in in mainstone uh because you were for two years going to mainstone or kind of yeah like... we did yeah yeah I enjoyed it very much. There was yeah. um, the thing was like my children were really young, you know. They were like yes. two years when I first started. Uh, I loved it very much, and I I must say that I enjoyed it very much, and I enjoyed very very much meeting Mr. Verna. Uh, I I think that for me he it was really funny because he used to be he liked to sort of make fun of people. Yeah, he, he liked to sort of say things that we didn't understand, all the foreign people didn't understand. And he would say something to me and I would just answer back. Mm. And I, or I, I know what he was talking about. So in, it started off like that. And then I started giving him words that I found. Mm. Mm. Just test him. <laughs> so it was really funny. So it's, I was like really scouring, you know, the, uh, the books, you know, to find words, mm. just to test him. And I think that he, he really enjoyed that, actually. Mm. Uh, yes. so, I mean, it's like, I, I, got, I gave him one word, and that's opsimat. Mm. And I thought, an opsimat, do you know what that is? No. It's Latin, okay? It means <laughs> someone who studies late, studies and carries on in late, late in life. An opsimat? Opsimat, O-P-S-I-M-A-T-H. Oh, obviously math, math. Oh, no, I've never heard of that, but I guess all three of us here are, are, are optimaths. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then he, I think he really liked that word because he said, like, yeah, that's me. Yeah. That's, I think yeah. it's so me, for me, it's like I'm an uh, optimath os, osteopath. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I think that's something to carry with you because I think, you know, I, I really enjoyed his humour. I really mm. did. I thought it was great. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so now I think uh, coming to to John Vernon College was great. You know, it felt like you felt the the presence of you know of all the other people who've been there, and it was mm. all the books and everything. And then obviously, Mr. Vernon was a, a great addition there. I think you know, mm. or, or the main person there really. And then it was great. I mean, and Diego it was nice seeing you, and I thought Chris. It was nice to see Chris develop. Mm. Chris Patton. Chris yeah. very demure, and then now he's like the king, you know? Mm, yes, exactly, yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I met, and Melvin I met there as well, and there was many others, you know? Mm. Uh, yeah, I mean, they were they were very young, Chris Button and Henry Lee. Yeah, it's, Henry, uh, yeah. 
it's amazing how how much uh, they have developed you know last time i saw henry lee and, and you look back and it, it it seems that only you know five years ago the last you know when we were in mainstone I know, but I know. it's been like 20 years almost uh, and then yeah. not that much but uh, i mean you you can see the the nice development of uh, all the teachers that we had o- over there which uh, I, I believe in a way, you know, if we talk about John Buenan uh, uh, on the same level, he probably developed in the same, you know, speed, ba- basically. You know, the John Buenan in the 80s or 70s probably yeah. was very different yeah. to, to the one that we met. I think so too. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. That Buenan, yeah. If, if, you, if you see videos of him, you know, from the 1960s, it is very much, very different to, uh, um, you know, in his 60s, 70s and... 80s and uh and, and and you know that that's a, a fantastic thing isn't it you know he's developing uh all his life uh as an osteop as an osteopath which is what you know we, we all try to do you know we're all trying to that's why you should, adopt, you should adopt my word optimat yes I, I am i, I get to <laughs> i get to yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i can't believe i'm being taught english by a swede <laughs> No, I, I am very good with the uh, languages. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I, I came to England when I was eighteen. Yeah, yeah. So I had Seventeen years, you know, like my youth. Just so I, I know all the slang and all. Yeah, 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 yeah. But well, Diego knows I'm fantastic with languages. I was over in Spain and I talk. I just talk fluent Spanish all the time. All the yeah. time, yeah. <laughs> Especially towards the evening, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Towards the end of the evening. Yeah. <laughs> Coaching, uh, oil in the works. <laughs> uh, and and uh, listen, Marika, how, how was um, uh, because uh, I had a similar experience as well. You know, coming back to to Spain, and I'm working basically as a classical osteopath, or I, I call myself a, an osteopath. Yeah. But I, I do work with the body adjustment. How, how do you find the your patients? Uh, how do they take? You know, because they probably try different osteopaths, and and we we work, you know, in a certain aspect with the adjustment. Are they happy with that? Do you think patients are, are okay? They're very happy with that. They come and they say to me, "You work differently from others," mm. and I, you know, and they say, "I, you know, this is." They say to me that uh, when you work, you 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 also use healing energy. Mm. yeah and, and i but that's what osteopathy is you know i think yeah. you know? Mm. but i think that there's so many quick chop merchants you mm. know who wants to crack crack yeah you know that's what we we're saying yes yeah and uh, so yeah i mean i think that this is a very strange idea but i think that since us since the covid and i had to do this uh, mm. nursing uh, transformation to work as a as an auxiliary nurse um, it's actually strengthened my osteopathy mm. because yeah. I feel I feel so much. I love my osteopathy. Mm. I like doing the nursing as well, but I feel that it's actually made me feel much more secure. Mm. I, I feel that, you know, okay, this is who I am. This is why I do. Take it or leave it. Mm. Mm. If, if you don't like me, go to someone else. Mm. But I, I have people coming all the time and they say, you work so differently. Mm. I, I work here uh, in Stockholm. Mm. I'm in a clinic where six osteopaths, mm. and I am the only one who works like this. Right. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, they do, but they don't. You know? <laughs> so, so, take that bit out, okay? I think one of the things is, is, is you know, um, uh, little John would say, you know, you, you're treating people with reverence, and that's what you're, what you're, alluding to here you know you treat people with great reverence you know that because they're uh, I mean, uh, still and uh, little john uh, meant it in terms of you know because uh, the human body was god's greatest creation and uh, I, i'm not quite sure about that i think it's a wonderful creation by nature um, i don't know if it's the best one or not but uh, but it is a fantastic thing and it's not about wham bam thank you ma'am no, you know, like, uh, uh, it is giving the body a chance to heal itself. Mm. Yeah, it's to give a suggestion. You know, like, like the body. If, if something happens and you change it, 
the body will think, okay, I'm not sure I like this new way. So they will kind of maybe slide back to the mm. old state because that's safe. Mm. And, but then you're sort of gently encouraging the body mm. to change mm. a different path. Mm. And I think that just by, you know, working them over with the bulldozer, mm. which I feel that some people do in mm. whatever occupation, it's not good. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's why classical osteopathy is so fantastic because it's really about taking the body, do some stuff, and giving the body back to the patient. The mm. patient, we, we, you know, we're working together. It's not mm. me going, oh, blah, 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 oh, now you're great. Yeah. You know, well, it's, 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 it's a teamwork. Yeah. You're well, encouraging the patient, you're encouraging the body to heal. Yeah. Like a catalyst. Um, yeah, we're we're, yeah. Uh, we're assisting. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I think that's important. Uh, but also, I think you just said that Steve was talking about um, God. Mm. He was not interested in God. Mm. He said that because uh, I must just say this because in the, like in the eighteen seventies, eighteen eighties, or eighteen mm. nineties, even mm. uh, in America, everybody was saying, "Oh, what kind of religion do you have?" And you had to sort of show, you know, like a cross or whatever. Uh, and he said, uh, "Nature is my uh, is my." Uh, yeah. So he had on his clock chain mm. he had a, a stone called Star of Anise. Mm. Uh, that star of Anise, I think it must be some kind of. Um, uh, it looked like a cross, but it was a stone that mm. formed like a star. Mm. So he had that on his clock chain that later on was stolen, but never mind. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting because I. I, I... Often with those old texts, when they when God is mentioned, you can very easily just swap that out for the word out for nature, if you if you so wish, and it has you know um, nature's creation or God's creation or or whatever. But he was very much against religion. He didn't, you know, oh, yeah. just, nature is my religion. Yeah. Just yeah. to appease people, he had this this star and he say on his cross on his chain. Just yes. to yeah. Cast Crap, you know, I don't want yeah. to. I don't want people to question me. Yeah, I think yeah. some people were thinking that he was like a dark mm. power or something like yeah. that. He was using his hands to heal people. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, Diego, do you remember in Madrid? Yes. And that was the first time I met Jason. And right. He, yeah. Yeah, and he was saying he was talking. This was in two thousand and ten. Mm. Probably yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah. And he was, Jason was saying, because that was for me, it was like amazing, because he was saying, uh, oh, yeah, uh, Andrew Taylor, Steve, you know, he had this, uh, he recorded stuff and he was saying stuff and he had, he could see stuff that was going to yes. happen in the future. And he, he could say to people like, okay, next week it's going to be a fire in uh, Adam's barn mm. or it's going to be a break in in Johnson's uh, haberdashery or something like that. And he would say stuff like that. And and this was like when his sons, you know, uh, I can't remember, Charles and whatever, um, the one at the bank and everything. And they were saying, because they were running the college, they were saying, Dad, you can't say this. People could think it's you who are doing it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, okay, I am not going to say anything more. Mm. So, so then it was like, uh, from, do you remember Tucker? Tucker? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Tucker was following him around because he, was, he found him so interested. Yeah. So he was saying, I think you're so boring. I really think you should tell me something to write about. This mm. is boring stuff. Nothing is happening. Mm. So, still says, he said, I'm going to tell you one thing. Okay. Well, you know that planet, Saturn, mm. you know, it has a ring around it. Okay. This is interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, really, it has two rings. The other ring is made of ice and water. Mm. But you couldn't see that with the yeah. stuff we had then. 2010, just before Jason was in Madrid, mm. NASA found the second ring of oh, Saturn. Wow. Yeah, that was amazing. I, I, I never fully understand, you know, how it still managed to, you know, guess about that or, you know, he, I don't know. He had a low. So people were saying, you know, when they, when they saw him, they were, some people were really scared of him because they said that he could look into the soul and mm. tell them mm. what's wrong with him. And he could, you know... As, you know, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think steel was amazing. Mm. And, and people were very God-fearing then yeah. as well, weren't they? Because he was chased out of Baldwin. I think, you know, the, yeah. 
or kick, kicked out of Baldwin, even though he'd built the church and the university or something out, out there with him and his brothers or family money. And, uh, and then he was kind of uh, hounded out of it, which isn't very Christian. I, was, I would say, well, probably is pretty Christian actually, kicking people out, but uh, it's not supposed to be. No, but I think that's because he wasn't God fearing, you know, yeah. he wasn't a daring, he wasn't behaving like he should be. Mm. Yeah. You know? so, I mean, I think, I think he's an interesting, very interesting person. And for me, that also makes, I think that makes osteopathy so different yeah. from any other stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think. Yeah, still, he, he was a good guy, yeah. you know, he was a good guy. I mean, he was like walking around in his later ages. He had money in his boots mm. okay? and he, he actually took a loan on the school, mm. school so that he, when people came to him, he was treating people against the walls. He was treating mm. people mm. against, on grass, you know, mm. and he was going, and they said, oh, how much should I pay you? No, no, you look like you, you need a you know, you need a good meal. Mm. You know, have some money, and he was paying mm. money wow. to them so that they can go and have a meal and take mm. care of children. And mm. and then his son said, "Dad, you're not allowed. You cannot go and to the bank and take money on the school." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the the sons did uh, that, no? It's yeah. And then yeah. In the end, uh, uh, Alvara, his wife, uh, when she died, she bequeathed money to him. So I think he got that. Like, I don't know if it was a hundred pounds, uh, sorry, pounds, sorry, hundred dollars. Mm. They were give to give to him, mm. uh, and then the rest was the kids to take care of, just mm. so that he could carry on. Because mm. he, his boots, you know, the, you've always seen his boots. Those yeah. boots, they were. He, he had them for seventy years. Seventy. Mm. And he oh. actually resold them. And when Jason, I, mean, I don't know if you heard it, when Jason took them because he. When he went around, because of my um, being the president, I was getting him to come and speak because, you know, he's an amazing speaker. So mm. I got him to come to all different countries in, in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, so he realized he couldn't carry around. But in Madrid, he had the real boots with him. Mm. But he decided, I cannot, you know, this is it's a real artifact. I can't carry mm. these around, mm. you know, they could be damaged. Mm. So they left them to uh, sort of a shoe, shoemakers to have them copied. And when they started looking around, them, they found uh, insoles. Mm, yeah, yeah. That still had created himself mm. in leather to mm. correct his gait because of his strokes. Mm. Yeah, that was interesting, wasn't it? It's really yeah. amazing. It must be the first insoles. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he was, you know, he was an amazing person, I think. And mm. I think Mr. Vernon. Was an amazing person too. So mm. you know, I'm very yeah. Happy. But it's, it's, it's I find uh, Andrew Taylor is still amazing, and and the way, he, at least for me, it was he was presented. It was more like a, a cowboy, mm. and uh, as soon as I met Jason and, and he started yeah. to yeah. to tell us about steel and you know how human he was and you know all these beautiful things. You realize that Steel was, you know, in a different level. He he was not a cowboy at all, and, and he, you know, he, he was a great man. Mm. Amazing, yeah. Uh, and yeah. I think, uh, yeah, no, I mean, I don't know if you experienced, but the first time I went to Kirksville, we came driving in quite late at night, and I was just like I had goosebumps everywhere. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was just an amazing experience, you know. And How come you've been out there so much? What, 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 what did you did you go out there for to do the tour, or did you yeah. said you did some lecturing out there? Yeah, the, the first time um, that I met Jason, that was in two thousand and ten. So I thought, you know, at, at that time I was the vice uh, uh, vice chairman of the Swedish Association. So I said, okay, um, I think we should have him um, to lecture in Sweden. So I invited him to Sweden. So he came to Sweden in uh, 2011. And um, it was really funny. So again, people, they were so quite happy that they were listening to his lecture. And he was actually amazing, amazed because I said to him, okay, I want you to lecture for three days. And he said, what? Three days? <laughs> yes. He said, oh, wow, I can do that. And he was like really pleased. That was the first time I was given more than like an hour slot or something. Exactly, like, yeah. He was in his, you know, I was in his chore. So 
in the evening we were sitting and he was talking about um uh, what's his name he used to be a John Vernon, the young chap. Uh, he was going to take over, but then it was like, uh, he was the new John Vernon and blah, blah, blah. And then it was a, do you know who I mean? The one with the sign, Gavin Bananas. Oh, uh, Jamie. Jamie. Jamie Archer. Yeah. Jamie Archer, exactly. So he was telling me about Jamie Archer and I met him there. And I said to him, well, you know, whenever you want a girl to lecture, you know, I can come and lecture. Mm -hmm. He says to me, wow, that's a brilliant idea. So like a couple of months later, he invited me and he said to me, you are allowed to, you can bring five other osteopaths from Sweden with you. Um, so I lectured on classic osteopathy. Oh. Body adjustment, road to harmony. Hmm. Wow. That was my title. Hmm. That's so yeah. nice. Yeah, so I did that. And uh, then I had people saying, oh yeah, we articulate in the same way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was yeah. a that was when I met. That was so funny. Okay, right. That was very funny. Well, t teaching in Kexwil is, is uh, you know, it, it makes you feeling, oh, my God, you know, you have to know your staff. Uh, I found so big and the audience, of, of course, they are doctors and... hundred uh, plinths. Plinths, yeah. A hundred. A hundred plinths, yeah. And then you have cameras. So they can see whatever your, it's like the screens are two by three meter or maybe bigger and they can see yeah. hands everywhere. Yeah. No, and, and they, they know their stuff. I mean, of course, they, they, you yeah. know, they are doctors <laughs> and they study for that. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's scary. But no, it, it, it yeah. is amazing, you know, to go to Kexville and, and to teach uh, body adjustment. Yeah. But, you know, I know I'll tell you something really funny. Okay. So I'm there, and then Viola Freiman is there. Oh. Right. So she's, we're doing, you know, they have this science lab where you can touch lab and you could test it, which is absolutely brilliant. You know, you yes. can where your accuracy is. And she's in there, and I ended up sitting next to her when they were like talking to us. So I invited her to Sweden. Mm -hmm. come oh. to <laughs> right. And she said, Oh, yeah. And she was like in the 90s. Oh, yeah, I can come. So then Jason had really fun because in the evening he booked us to a restaurant at the lake. Mm -hmm. He puts me next to her. Mm -hmm. So we're sitting there and we are discussing osteopathy and we're discussing everything. And my colleague from Sweden, lovely guy, he was sitting opposite me and he was like really into cranial stuff. And he was like sitting there and he was like lapping everything up. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking to my eye, like Viola, and she says to me, you know, you speak such a good English. How come you speak such a good English? I said, well, I lived 17 years in London uh, and uh, I also trained. I should have gone on Cornish or classical osteopathy. <laughs> 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 Her eyes went completely black. Mm -hmm. And she just said, don't you think that Sutherland and Still were classical osteopaths? <laughs> said, yes, obviously. Mm. But school was called John Vernon, John Vernon College of Classical Osteopathy. I didn't make that up. Mm. And she was, she wouldn't talk to me again. And she wouldn't have come to Sweden. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, God. My God. I, I, I remember, um, not that I was there, but at, at a conference somewhere, John Wernham and Viola Fryman were put next to each other on the table. Yeah. And they had uh, quite, uh, quite a yeah, heated uh, discussion. Uh, ESO. Yeah. Uh, the ESO, was it? Yeah. That was the other campus. And the European, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was a big thing. Mm. <laughs> but I don't know, I, I, I have seen uh, some pictures of, you know, of both of them, Will yeah. Freiman and, and Mr. Werner. And, you know, the, the, when you look at a picture and, and you see the two most experienced Osterbass in the world. Yeah, mm. of course. Yeah. Talking, you know, as probably she was right, classical osteopathy, I don't know, different schools, but such a, an amazing experience in the hands. In you know, how many patients have gone through the hands, yeah. and amazing, yeah. That, that That's one of the pictures I normally in, in my lectures I, I, I show to the students, and I say, you know. There is no fight in osteopathy. We are all osteopaths, and and we can be from different schools. But mm -hmm. you know that that's osteopathy. That 
atmosphere of uh, sharing information and knowledge and you know of course we are all different but i don't know but but then I, you have to consider all our patients are different mm. of course so mm. so we are, you know i mean you have to be true to yourself mm. i am the person i am you are the person you are mm. and, and i think that you know you have the principles of osteopathy you have your understanding of um, structures and functions and whatever and you have a anatomy and you have whatever direction you go and like we have a the body adjustment uh, as a guide you know but we're still our own people and i think it's really important to to understand that and you know i, I think sometimes people come to me and they think oh my god she didn't do anything mm. you know and i say to them Okay, you might not feel that I've done anything, but you know you might be a little bit sore tomorrow. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, but I think it's what you say. It's so important to work with the principles, and as you get more experience in the profession, I think you realize, uh, you know, of course, of course, it's important what the patient thinks and and believes. Uh, but you think they had enough? That that's that's yeah. enough. Uh, yeah, and I think I heard once, I don't know who, who was, I don't know, maybe it was Chris Campbell talking about Tom Dahmer or something like that. And and he, he was explaining that, uh, I think it was Tom Dahmer anyway, that a patient would come to the clinic and Tom Dahmer would say, oh, I saw you a week later, uh, this week. No, I think the treatment is still, you know, still having an effect on you and I, I will see you uh next week mm -hmm. so i think that's wow that's amazing to be able to feel that change in the in the tissues and and to be honest to to the tissues and to the patients say no hang on just wait uh which is very difficult in in a day-to-day -day practice you know how patients are and you know but um yeah i think that's also um that's something that grows with your maturity as an osteopath mm -hmm. or a body practitioner a body adjuster you need to sort of believe in yourself. You need to believe in what you feel and also be able to say that to the patient because mm -hmm. sometimes patients, can, as you know, they can be very someone, yeah, I want to come tomorrow. I want to come Friday, you know? Mm -hmm. I, you know what I mean? I want this to happen quickly. Come, yeah. can I come tomorrow? Yeah. 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 It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's okay. interesting, isn't it? We do, you know, what, what we're actually palpating at that moment in time what, and what we're interpreting is a personal experience and we have to through from our education and experience we have to, we have to trust that yeah. Yes. yeah that's really important i think that in the beginning you're quite unsure because you want to please and you want people to come but mm. you know, sometimes you know you really have to listen i think that i have like an inner voice you know you say i don't know you should come in three weeks or you should come tomorrow or mm. not tomorrow i never do it tomorrow but, but you know what i mean I, I i have that so someone's telling me now <laughs> <laughs> I keep on thinking it's still because my birthday is on the 7th of August, mm. but I'm born in Sweden and he was born in America. So that's basically yeah. the same yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, connected. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure I am. I can see him. I can mm. feel him. <laughs> so how did you get involved in... Um, so you, you were vice chairman of the Swedish Osteopathic <laughs> Association, the Swedish board. How did you... Uh, were you involved in the European for Forum of Osteopathy before well, that? Or? So what we'll started with, so 2011, uh, I got Jason to come and then I went over to America and lecture. And then I was then, uh, although I was the vice chairman, I was also the international uh, representative for Sweden. Yeah. So I went to a meeting in Brussels uh, to start off the SEND process. Mm. Uh, so then I got involved with the SEM process. So I was uh, the chairman for the Swedish SEM for the for the Swedish committee. Mm. Could, the could, could you just explain to people what the SEM process was? Okay. So in, in 2013, well, it started before, but so 2013, we started a process to actually um, make up a scheme to certify osteopathy to explain osteopathy so to so that you could see e mark and there's not c mark sorry forget that one. that's later okay so it was just to make up what is osteopathy and this is like a, um, a process and this was this is really good for countries who are 
not legislated mm. because if you are not legislated you should follow the same directives mm. so we carried on so i i represented sweden um so i sat in a committee for two years 2015 2015 the same document was uh, finished mm. and that if you are not a legislated country britain's a legislated country for example so you do not have to follow the same mm. because you have laws but uh, in countries where you, like in Sweden, for example, when you have not legislated, you should follow the same. Mm. So the directives about what the clinics look like, education. Mm. The most important part, really, I think, is education. Mm. Uh, yeah. So you're talking about 4,800 hours, um, and you're talking about type 1, and you're talking about type 2 education. Type 2 education is uh, if you're a part-time school, or mm. maybe physio is doing it. You know, and then you're talking about 2,000 hours education and you're talking about, it's a lot of stuff and you can, you can read that on it. But, uh, so that was, for me, I think that was a really important thing. Mm. Because uh, in, I think it's about 11 countries in Europe who are legislated now. Mm. Um, Sweden is the only Scandinavian country which is not legislated, mm. uh, which is tough for us. <laughs> We have VAT of 25% and plus we have very, very high taxes and we are competing with chiropractors and a, a group called nephropaths. And when I talk okay. about nephropaths in Europe, they say nephropaths, nephropaths, who are they? Mm. <laughs> so it, it's interesting. So from that, from the same process, um, the, the Austrian standards or the Ocean Osteopathic Schools European Academic Network together with Austrian Standards Institute, created um, a CE mark, CE mark, you could see mark standards, oh, sorry, you could see mark products or um, um, services. Hmm. So if you look, for example, here I got coffee mug, underneath here is this like a CE mark, means it's yeah. the European standard. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's how we created a European standard for osteopathic schools, for oh. example, ESO has done that, gone through that scrutiny. And we have schools all around Europe. So this summer I've done two schools. Uh, I have two schools more to do this year. So it's, it's, it's interesting because you're also making sure that the schools are following the European standard. Mm. And they're doing the education hours. Like in October, I'm going to Brussels to check a school's um, um, clinic. Mm. Because when we did the work for them last October, the clinic was not set up. So now mm. I'm going to go there and I'm going to check the clinic. Wow. That's so, so important. That's why. Uh, mm. But uh, I mean, I believe the, the, the process, you know, how, how difficult it was to, to bring together so many European countries and registers. And um, I was reading, you know, through, through the, the, the process, uh, standards in the scope of osteopathy the description of osteopathy i mean <laughs> something that we we can go for hours how, how, how was that process it was absolutely crazy so we met in brussels and it was like you had uh italian people saying we can really get this big document and we're going to this paragraph and they go no we cannot agree to that we have to do an AV a deviation a deviation that they that this is not working in Italy. This is not working in Italy. This is not working in Italy. France would do the same. This is not working in France. You can't say osteopathic treatment because that's against the law in France. Mm. And it was like all the time trying to find the right wording. Because if you have a deviation, is that deviate from the actual standard. And that's like pages and pages and pages after the standard, which weakens the standard. Wow. It was very interesting, and it was a lot of shouting and a little lot of screaming. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun, so we carried on for about two years, and then we had, you know, we had we gave birth to this document on the, I think it was the fifteenth of August, two thousand and fifteen, or seventh of August, something like that. It was like an amazing feeling. But then it, the, the document had to go through the European Parliament, and the. Yeah. Yes, it's been accepted. Yes, so we. Yeah, but they, I, I believe. I mean, the politicians. You know, they. Some of them might know what osteopathy is, but uh, I don't know to, to accept that document like this. Oh, is, we did a, we, I, hang on a minute. Let me think. I can't remember what year it was. Could it be two thousand and sixteen? We actually went to the European um, uh, Parliament, Parliament, and we were 
we were allowed, we were sitting on a panel, a few of us, and we presented a document to the European Parliament. Unfortunately, there were not a lot of uh, politicians there because they were all in Strasbourg or somewhere. But uh, it was an interesting thing anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I, I find it, I, I follow a little bit, you know, through the Spanish register and, you know, Femin and so on. Yeah. And I find uh, that that was such an amazing job. And I always been amazed and, you know, that you were involved in, in, in the whole thing, situation. Yeah. Because, interesting and I can tell you uh, a few years ago uh, could have been 2019 or something like that uh, yeah something like that you know it's like this um, COVID stuff has sort of changed you know we've lost year, years I think uh, yeah um, suddenly someone in Spain I think wanted to change because they wanted to say that osteopaths had to be it was physios own the osteopathy or something like that yeah exactly yeah. yeah and I was heavily involved with that can I tell you <laughs> <sighs> I had a talk um, I, I was really worried that some sort of Spanish mafia was going to kill me or something <laughs> <laughs> No, but I believe it's, it's uh, you know, not only in Spain, probably in many countries. I mean, uh, physiotherapy and osteopathy was uh, in France historically, you know, all their lives been fighting and osteopaths been sued, uh, in, you know. Uh, so, so, so. That was very interesting because I, I spoke to the person who was involved with the SAM process in. Uh, in Austrian Standard Institute and I said uh, you know we can't do this and I wrote to all the organizations saying you know you have to say no you have to say no you have to vote against this and she said to me you can't do this I'm going to make sure that you can never be anywhere she said to me <laughs> wow yeah. that's mafia <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> that, that was exciting times no, no, but uh, I congratulate you guys that you were involved because it's such an achievement. I think historically, maybe, you know, from the UK, you know, uh, it might not be seen because the UK was already legalized. But for us, uh, for me in Spain, yeah, that was such yeah, an important. Exactly. It's so important, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, yeah, that was an interesting business. And then, and I mean, if you look at osteopathy in many countries, you know, uh, you know, during the same process, you had countries like uh, Romania and um, um, Bulgaria, mm -hmm. they were all the time voting no to all the documents that have been sent. They never came to, came, they never came to the meetings. They were just voting no. They wouldn't agree. Wow. They said that you, in, I think in Bulgaria, they said that you had to be a doctor of 10 years and then you could be an osteopath. Mm -hmm. So there was wow. a lot of crazy stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you know, and I, I'm, I'm glad. I, I, in this sort of process, uh, I mean, we were talking about principles and practice, uh, uh, you know, in classical osteopathy, I mean, uh, do, do they take that into account or is this a general view of principles and a general view of techniques or, or, or it's practice? A view and, you, and you're sort of talking about like, what should be announced, you know, I mean, as long as you're as osteopathy and you're following the hours and teaching and stuff like that. Right. And osteopathic principles and stuff like you know, what I mean, it, it's uh, yes, it has yeah. to be quite broad. But I think the most important part is probably the education part. Yeah, you have enough training, everybody's allowed to live, I think, because you have it, it, it's the same as when you're doing the certification on the schools. You have schools that could be very sort of uh, subtle and very cranial, you have schools that are sort of maybe more. Classical, or you have schools that are very, yeah, yes. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's important that the, that the teaching is sound and the education is sound, um, right. the curriculum, hours, yeah. uh, the teachers are of good quality, you know, and it's like, you know, it's not yeah. just funny because that happens in some countries. No, no, I, I understand because I, I, I've been involved in Spain and in teaching, and you can appreciate how the difference. You know, some schools following the European Federation and some other schools are so far apart. And yeah. uh, the teaching is uh, it's incredible. I mean, that's not osteopathy, yeah. that's more medicine. Uh, or it's more massage. Or massage, exactly. Yeah, I mean, you know. Yeah. 
but uh, yeah, there. Yeah. So I think the standard has to. They need to have such such, such an equilibrium in all the countries. I think that was to, to make osteopathy great in a country. I think that you don't need too many associations. Yeah. Uh, you don't need too many schools. Yeah. I think that you need to have a, a because I can see in Sweden we're lucky at the moment. We have a really really good school in Gothenburg. We have another school uh, which is not really following the standard. Um, you know, they don't live up to the hours and stuff like that. Uh, I don't know who people are going to listen to this, so I <laughs> have to be a bit careful. But you have, and it's like that in many countries, you know, in, in Italy, you have so many associations. You, they're all fighting each other. Uh, and, and even, although I think it was 2000 and, oh, never, never, 2017 or 18, Osteopathy was recognized in Italy, but they hadn't decided on the profile who is an osteopath. What, what is an osteopath? Yeah. Who is an osteopath? You know, what is osteopathy? And they're still fighting that. And you still have loads of different organizations and they are all fighting each other. And there, you have some saying, oh, that we, what's that we're doing is best. And it's the same in France. Mm. You have, I, I think that before they, this uh, big stuff they did when they used to, decided osteopathy was legislated. I think they had 75 schools and I think they have 32 schools now. Mm. And those schools are schools that have come together. Yeah. Wow. And then that, you have uh, uh, some interesting stuff, but I'm not going to tell you that online. <laughs> no, no, no. But it, it, you know, it, 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 I think it's it bring to the audience uh, 75 schools. I always say to people, if you want to keep quality of a school, you know, osteopaths per se, we are not teachers, you know, I have patients who are university teachers and they make a living by teaching. And we make a living, most of us, by working in the clinic and teaching is just secondary. So to have a proper school of osteopathy with, you know, quality of teachers of osteopathy, one one school, you know, is, is enough. I mean, 75 schools, where do you get it's teachers from? Now, but, but yeah, I know. So, Robert, you have enough job. Uh, you can go to work to France if you want. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, with my French language skills, that would be, be fantastic. <laughs> no, no, man. I, I think that, I think, is important. I think just try to narrow that. And it's the same in Germany. You have lots of different schools, lots of different ideas on what osteopathy is, lots mm. of different organizations. I think we are lucky in Sweden. We only have one organization at the moment. Unfortunately, we have a government that doesn't think that osteopathy is anything, mm -hmm. uh, you know. So that's a problem because our government is saying, oh, we have all the therapists that we need. We don't need any more. Right. And we try to say, you know, like, hang on, this is not fair, you know. Mm. People go to a chiropractor, go to a naturopath, and mm. they say, oh, we use osteopathic techniques. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah? yeah, and then they don't have to pay VAT, and we have twenty five percent VAT. It's it, it, it's tricky, isn't it? Because um, people, and even a lot of osteopaths, and all the people you're talking about involved in legislation, um, will believe that it has to be looked at from a medical perspective. Whereas you know we've stepped outside that, we understand that, but we look at it from an oste an osteopathic perspective and you know so our, our thinking is geared up to be different i totally agree with you and i think that somehow it's quite dangerous to go and think about it the uh, the medical way i think that mm. yeah, like i mean david you probably agree with me when you're at the courses in kirksville and you first time i went there and i was like there was something about nerves and things and i was getting well, shit, i have to really read here mm. And I come there and I'm doing uh, on the course so basic techniques, and I'm thinking, bloody hell, that was why I did the first year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they have all the facilities, mm. they have the body labs, you know, have all these cadavers they can mm. bring out and in the freezer, mm. like the people mm. have cadavers that they, they use, mm. like, and they have these mannequins that they call these dolls that you could practice, you know, putting needles in, <laughs> practice and doing manipulations on. Uh, you know, they have all the techniques. But then, yeah, I think it's like 65, uh, hang on a minute, 65 thousand euro osteopaths graduated or something like that. And out of them, maybe two or three thousand becomes real osteopaths. Mm. Yeah. But, um, they just 
they know osteopathy is good. Mm. They say that they ha- adhere to the principles, mm. but they don't use it mm. because the insurances mm. are so high. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I remember speaking to Jason as well, and he, yeah. he said something along the lines of, well, if you're, uh, you know, on insurance, you get something like, I don't know, um, $240 per patient or something and if, if you you know you have massive university and education fees out there that you have to pay off and if you're if you work doing what they call osteopathic osteopathic <laughs> manipulative medicine you know you're seeing two patients an hour if you're working medically you're seeing six you know so uh, it's a you know a three you're going to earn three times as much you That's know right. and you have all this debt around you so uh I, right, you know, yeah the, the fees are astronomical. Uh, I think it's like twenty-five thousand dollars a year or something like that. Yeah, yeah. There and it's like four years. Okay, mm. you become a really good doctor. Mm. Um, I, I I went to so two thousand eleven. I was there. I was back two thousand thirteen. Lecturing again, mm. and then I was back again two thousand and fourteen, fifteen. And then lectured again. Mm. <laughs> I was on, on three or four lectures there, mm. um, and then. Uh, 2017, I became an uh, honorable member of the uh, Andrew Taylor Steele University's uh, ALMA. Oh, wow. That's interesting. I had a nice wow. plaque, and I took that, I got that, I received that in um, Philadelphia. Oh, uh, wow. As a big convention there, because they were saying, because I've uh, got Jason to lecture everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So my, that's, my, that's fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, that was a really brilliant feeling, actually. It was, and I was so shocked. I wasn't expecting that. And it was like, wow, I must be the only European who's got that, you know? Yeah, totally, yeah. totally. Such a nice recognition. Yeah, that is. And, 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 you know, to a non-medic as yeah. well. Yeah, so I am. A, so, so now I have every year for the, uh, um, you know, the uh, Founders Day, it's always someone. I don't know. It's, it's a doctor, and I don't know who he is. He's... Uh, uh, donating money in my name. All oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too poor to do that. <laughs> yes. Oh. Amazing. Mm. So, um, you know, we, we, we run in, you know, mo- sorry, I'm, I'm a brilliant. Brilliant. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's just, I wanted to ask you, uh, how, how do you see, you know, you, you see osteopathy in the States, you have seen osteopathy in the UK and, and, you know, firsthand osteopathy in Europe. How do you see osteopathy developing? I know it's a difficult question, but you know, do you see osteopathy as a, as a profession, or you see as a separation? You know, classical osteopaths, uh, biodynamic osteopathy, physiotherapy. I don't know. What's your feeling? I think that osteopathy. We are we are like we said before. We have all different directions. For me, classical osteopathy is obviously the purest one. Uh, but I think that we are different. But I, I really don't want uh, physio to be part of the osteopathy. I think that osteopathy should be osteopathy. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that we are, I think things are going to change because I think that ev- everything in the world at the moment is crazy. Things are changing. Um, you know, bad stuff going on. You know, I think that osteopathy, I think that we are we are still children. I think that we're going to survive, and we're going to bring osteopathy forward. Uh, I think we just have to sort of uh, spread the good stuff. Mm. I, exactly. uh, I really do, and I, I think that the more I work, I think that it's important to make our students or our colleagues to feel safe, to mm. feel that what they do is good stuff, and to make them understand what they're doing you know you're doing good stuff keep on mm. doing it just don't mm. you know don't feel negative just feel mm. good mm. because i think that we're going to win in the end <laughs> no. i always i always think the, the truth truth will out eventually yeah, exactly yeah yeah just kind of got to carry on keep yeah. keep banging your head against the ball <laughs> yeah, yeah i really do think that and, and i think that we need to sort of feel good about what we do and i think that's mm. maybe you know what we need is mm. like a big congress mm. oh, yeah. Yeah. that's what we need we need a big congress mm. for yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know? we, we are looking to do that we're looking forward mm. you know, and so we just encourage each other and try to listen to each other and try to be understanding and try to sort of 
nurture each other and boast each other. I think that's really important because I think that COVID has done so much shit to people mm. that we need mm. to sort of feel the warmth, feel what we're doing is good and be encouraged by each other. So, you know, we need to sort of get the energies mm. going together, I think. Mm. Um, that's how Definitely. it, you know. But, <laughs> I mean, I'm happy where I work at the at this with my patients, you know, mm. the mental... I'm an so and I really enjoy it, you know. <laughs> it's like, I'm doing it all the time. Yeah, I do. I do. I enjoy what I do, and uh, um, it's it's uh, a wonder, a f wonderful way of helping people. Yeah, I think yeah, it is. Mm. I think you need to sort of carry on and just hope that mm. what we do is going to sort of encourage more people to do it and to give the confidence to do it. Yeah, and keep up to my thing. Exactly, optimal. 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 Exactly. That's the new slogan. That's the new slogan. Very good. I haven't talked anything about EFFO before, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, any more questions from you, Robert? No, I, I I don't think so. I don't think so. That's been that's been that's been a really fascinating insight, yeah, Marika. You know, I, I I knew I knew a reasonable amount about you, but I I that that, that you had, you've had, had such a busy, full, interesting career uh, in osteopathy. It's uh, it's it's wonderful to listen to that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for listening to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, th thank you, Marika, for the invitation. And uh, yeah, as Robert you. says, you are so interesting and mm. so funny. Thank you. <laughs> so funny. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, no. When I met you in Barcelona, and, well, in in London as well. So yeah. it's, it's it's good fun to talk to you always. You always bring interesting. Uh, stories oh. and interesting we, things. We met in uh, Slangenbad as well. In where? In Schlangenbad. Do we? And yeah, yeah. Uh, did, uh, yeah, 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 it's true, yeah, yeah. So I... Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember I went there with uh, with the John Bonon College with Gail and so on. Yeah, that was uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Marika and Diego, for uh, speaking to us all this evening, and uh, we look forward to. Um, you're putting it up on the YouTube channel, Diego, and uh, hopefully over the next week or so, I will put it up on uh, the podcast. It's always easier to get the podcast out because there's a lot less editing uh, that that I have to do than Diego does for the YouTube channel. So thank you so much for listening. If you'd like any more information about classical osteopathy, please do visit our website, which is www.classical-osteopathy.org. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, thank you very much. Goodbye. Yeah.